Hey there, welcome to Money in Japan, where we bring you insights into the Japanese market. Warren Buffett has invested $6 billion into the Japanese economy, and the Japanese government has just declared war on fax machines and hunkos. What even is a hunko? Find out in this episode. So in today's episode, we're going to look into five fascinating things you may not know about Japan and what it might mean for investing in this country. I really want to bring you guys tremendous value about Japan, so please hit the like button, subscribe, do whatever you can to help us out, leave a comment.、Uh, that way I can bring you guys more value and more insight into this amazing country. Now, this episode is not giving any investment advice or trading advice whatsoever, purely for educational purposes. Okay, number one on the agenda fax machines. You may not even know what they are, and you probably don't need to know what they are. But would you believe 95% of Japanese businesses use them today? Taro Kono, who is Japan's new administrative reform minister, has actually recently declared war on fax machines. There's another one he's declared war on, but I'll cover that as number two. This may sound a little bit hilarious, but it is actually a pretty big problem in Japan, and it paints a picture of the problems that we have in both government and business circles where no work can get done efficiently unless you're printing something out. So, obviously, this has got to go, and it's part of their agenda.、Um, by the way, fax machines were invented in the 1970s. So, with the mention of the fax machine, you might be thinking, all right, this doesn't paint a very good picture for Japan already. But don't be too alarmed because one of the strong sides of Japan is its resistance to change. Now, what this entails is a level of stability, quite a strong level of stability. So keep this in mind when looking at the Japanese market, Japanese companies, and especially during large events like a pandemic. Now, number two on this list, brace yourself, it is the Hanko. Again, you're probably thinking like the fax machine, what the heck is that? So, This hanko is a personal seal which people use in place of a signature.、Um, it's usually the size of half a pen, literally, and it's been around for hundreds of years. Now, this goes hand in hand with the fax machine in being a very obsolete way and slow and inefficient、um, way of doing business and signing documents. So, the hanko still exists because people are still printing things or faxing things, and typically, A hanko is used, especially in business circles, by maybe a manager to approve a purchase order or some type of work or a directive on a piece of paper. It'll get stamped so that they have a track record that, yep, manager Bob has said I can do XYZ. Now, when the coronavirus pandemic has hit, it's created an interesting problem. If I wanted to have a document, which I've just printed or maybe had faxed, I need to have my boss stamp it, and he's not physically with me in the same room because I'm working remotely. So, what's happening is that many staff members are jumping on the train because, keep in mind, a place like Tokyo, you don't have cars, and they're going to meet their boss or supervisor to have them stamp a document and then buggering off back home. It doesn't make much sense, and it also burns a little bit of time. Now, as I alluded to, the hanko is kind of a pivotal pain point for Japan right now, and I want to cover this in more detail in a later episode. However, the point I'm making with the hanko is that this is a old procedure that has existed for many, many years, and it's quickly on its way out, which gives light to the fact that you'll probably see a lot of change coming to Japan over the next few years, if not decade. All right, number three. You're probably getting a hint that Japan is not very high tech, and if you were starting to think that, you'd actually be completely correct. Japan has struggled to digitize itself over the last two decades. Now, in year 2000, the government mandated a digital revolution, and as I just mentioned before, 95% of businesses still use fax machines. You can see there's a little bit of a separation of goals here. Now, what low tech results in is obviously. Higher costs and lower efficiency, longer working hours, more stress, those sort of things. Unfortunately, as well, one of the motivating changes in Japan to digitize, obviously, is the government, and the government is still sending a ton of faxes. So, this is creating problems and not leading businesses in the right direction. Now, compounding on top of this low tech conundrum in Japan is the fact that 
many government ministries have their own virtual LAN slash private network, or WAN, I guess you could call it, set up with their own security preferences, which means that if I wanted to do a video call with someone else in a different department or a different ministry, it's not actually possible. So remote work creates a ton of headaches. Now let's take a look at businesses. Are they high tech too? Sure, there are some high tech companies out there, but in general, very large companies struggle to adapt to change, let alone to Windows updates. One interesting example is back in 2015, an auditor was going through TEPCO, which is the Fukushima power plant management company, and they found that they were still running Windows XP. This was mid-2015 when this result was released, and Windows XP had ceased updating from mid-2014. So there were no security patches available. These things were live on the internet, all 48,000 computers, mind you. Now, I'm not saying the Fukushima power plant was run with a Windows XP machine, but what I am saying is that the entire company had very outdated machines. Now, their response was somewhere along the lines of, we will accelerate upgrading our systems, but they didn't actually provide a date. Now, you may have also heard that the Tokyo Stock Exchange was down for an entire day when the computer system failed to fail over. This was claimed to be one of the worst outages that they've ever had, and unfortunately, the market and other international markets were not able to trade with Japan, losing a ton of money. So you're probably starting to see a little bit of a picture being painted that, in general, things aren't as high-tech as you probably thought they were. Give it a Google, you'll be surprised. A recent OECD report revealed that in Denmark and Iceland, the government was using about 70% of their services on a digital platform. This pales in comparison with Japan using about 12%. The government survey also unveiled that this was basically adding 323 million hours of work every year. This again paints a picture, unfortunately, that Japan isn't as high-tech a country as you may have thought. Now, what's the takeaway here, you might ask? So, from one perspective, I see that this may constitute a value trade of sorts. If you have a large quantity of companies trading in one of the largest economies in the world that are not embracing efficiency, cloud computing, other technology trends, then you have almost a potential value trade, if I might call it that. In maybe up to a decade, many companies will optimize their systems and basically go into the cloud, so to speak. And this may see some significant efficiency gains and possibly, therefore, share price gains. I don't know. Give a comment below. So, number four. Let's have a look at the banking system. Obviously, this is where all the money sits, so what's it like? Now, out of the top 15 banks in the world, Japan has four. However, I wouldn't really go as far as saying that the banks are efficient either. Remember the hunko that I mentioned? Yep, you'll need to take that for your bank account application. Or if you even want to open an online bank account with your normal bank account, you'll need to fill out another form for that. I don't think you need to fax it, but you'll definitely need your hunko to stamp it. On top of that, Japan is a heavily cash-based society, which you might find interesting. Now, with supposedly 1.8 quadrillion yen in cash deposits, this is actually painting a picture that people don't really want to delve in what they call risky investments, which may just be stock trading or things like that. People prefer to save money and just leave it in the bank account. So what's the takeaway with the bank system in Japan? What I'm getting at here is that there is a lot of cash in the bank accounts, high liquidity and very stable. Stability is key in this discussion. Now, number five, you may find this to be a little bit of a surprise, but it's quite relevant during a pandemic, and that is mask wearing. Now, pre-pandemic, Japanese people tend to wear masks quite regularly. This may seem a little weird or foreign for those of us who've never worn a mask in our life, which I know is probably many of you viewers. Uh, however, they actually have about three reasons that they would prefer to wear masks. And like I said, this is pre-pandemic. So obviously, reason number one, people wear a mask when they're sick. Now, they'll do this out of consideration for other people, and it enables them to go to work. Uh, reason number two is because they don't want to get sick. So in many cases, uh, Harry may be going on the train, and it's winter, and the train is unfortunately jam-packed. And he doesn't want to catch a cold, so he might wear a mask as well. The third reason might take you by a little surprise, but it is a lack of self-confidence. 
people will wear a mask to hide their face or just kind of not be seen in public because they don't really feel that good about themselves. The picture that I'm trying to paint here is that the pandemic is not over yet, but Japan is in a good position to beat this pandemic or at least keep coronavirus cases low. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Give us a like, share, or subscribe. I plan to bring a ton of value your way. So keep checking the channel out. See you till next time.